We've matched up with another ranked match, this time as the Axis. And it is a player that we have seen before, Commander Slash. Commander Slash, of course, played TTG on his channel, has played Roach Warrior on the DZMC gaming channel, and his name has been seen on the Discord. Last I heard of him, he was a platinum ranked player, so this should be a good challenge. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoy. Germany round one. This is a pretty good player, so we're gonna have to watch closely. Six infantry and one tank. Took West Russia and stacked it up a bit. Strafed Ukraine. Oh, he only lost two infantry, so that worked out fabulously for him. Landed his two fighters. Put the infantry in Szechuan. Put an anti-aircraft gun in West Russia. Sub in seven. Two infantry in Archangel. One infantry to Russia. One infantry in Evenki and three to Yakut. Mobilized his units. So Germany. We'll do it like that. We'll do the season seven. My med operation. We will take Karelia, but we'll take it lightly. We cannot hold it. He's got 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 units that can get into there. And I can only get 15 units in there. I could stack it, actually. I could stack it, because then it'd be. I can also dead zone it. So if I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, I could have 14 in there. And then he can come in with 19. And then behind it, I would have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Plus all the aircraft. So Karelia would be dead zoned. He would have 34. He would expect 6 hits. He would expect to wipe out my infantry in the first round. I would expect to get five hits back. <sighs> I think I should do it. All right. Okay. <clears throat> May the dice gods be with us. That was successful. Now, let's take a look at this. Let's see. I'm gonna bring infantry instead of the anti aircraft gun. Because he'd only be coming in with two aircraft, so it's not worth it. And infantry is better. If he had three aircraft, then you'd be in business. 14 on 19. He'll have 10 infantry. I'm just afraid of him strafing this. Because behind it... Behind it will be these 7 units and all of my aircraft. Nah. Nah, let's just get what we can to the front. Yeah, I think we'll do it like that. I think we'll preserve our German forces. We got a little lightning outside. I just, I think he'll end up just strafing Karelia if I put all 14 units in there. And then I would end up having to stack Karelia. Next round with depleted forces and he would get to build up 
a little bit more this way. He kind of has to trade a little bit, and we have a good force behind here. I think we have a good position in the Atlantic, because I will have 7-8 units that could target his fleet. Hopefully that slows him down. So we'll mobilize our units. I'm gonna put one infantry in Italy, just in case we still have this transport. I have at least one unit that I could pick up and drop off somewhere. I like that I saved this one sub. See how that works out. All right, UK. All right, Japan round one. Let's look at Commander Slash's moves. He only purchased three infantry. I guess he's gonna go for a fleet next round. We'll definitely get rid of that cruiser. We'll probably get that transport fixed. I would have to land in Morocco. And then the United States could get it. So for combat, Season 5, he took out the transport. He took back Transjordan. Took Season 7. Took 17. He did lose a bomber. And he took 61. Two fighters in Persia. One unit in Congo. Doesn't he have a transport here? He has a transport up here. Hmm. I mean, I guess he could be anticipating losing the transport. And just moved it over here to be a pain. It, moving it to 33, I think, is a better option. Because then I have to move my fleet in this direction. To 32. In range of his two fighters. Interesting. I guess he figures if I don't take out the transport, he could hit Italy or something. Moved his fleet over here, took the two infantry. He brought down a tank down here with his transport. That was a pretty decent move, because now the transport can still get up to C-Zone 8. He's got a tank down here now. I don't see Africa falling into the hands of the Axis anytime soon in this game. He put his three infantry in India. And so for the Japanese, I doubt this player is going KJF. I'm going to purchase my regular two transports and a bomber. And we'll save four IPCs. Or, you know what, let's, let's purchase one. Let's purchase a unit. Make sure we can fill up our transports. Alright, for combat. I'm gonna, of course, take Anwe. I'm gonna use three infantry to take Berietia. We'll just go three infantry... I want to make sure I get Berietia. Attack Season 61 with this battleship and destroyer. Send one fighter to get this transport. The other fighter will go to 61 to assist with that. Make sure we get that. We'll use two infantry for Burma. I want to take Burma. Or I guess we don't need to take Burma, do we? We could just kill the infantry. Never mind, never mind. We'll just go for the infantry. Just like that. And we take Yunnan with these units. Of course, we'll do C Zone 53. I think C Zone 53 is a very fundamental attack for the Japanese on their first round. Just like that. Okay, I like it. May the Dice Gods be with us.
Well, that was successful. Yunnan was a little ridiculous. But no harm, no foul. It's still just very odd. Oh, 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 no. We need you in C-Zone 36. With you. Battleship and aircraft carrier. I'm gonna land these two in Solomon Island. Actually, let's land them. Let's land them right here in Midway. All he could really do is bring two infantry and uh, one battleship. So it's a difficult fight for him. Let's bring this aircraft carrier back. We can safely land these two fighters on that aircraft carrier. Let's use this transport and we'll take a tank. And one infantry. Do you have any other moves that I need to make or that would be good moves to make? I don't see any. Looks good. So we get a bomber on Japan. Put the two transports out in C-Zone 60. It's not likely he would get Bariatia. But the C-Zone 60 is just a spot that he has no capability of reaching. One infantry. I actually didn't need the one infantry, did I? I'm going to have three transports and I have... Four, five, six, seven, eight units, actually, if you count the anti-aircraft gun. So a slight error. I could have saved the four IPCs. Probably doesn't matter that much. And probably just purchase one less infantry next round. So that's a double and triple check. Let's see it. Commander slash and your allies. Germany round two. He has stacked up Ukraine. I actually anticipated him doing that. Interesting, interesting. What we could do about this. Let's go over the moves first to make sure we don't miss anything. The USA, round one. Aircraft carrier, three transports, one infantry, one artillery. No combat. He moved a destroyer and transports into C Zone 10. Move some units up into Canada, two fighters on the aircraft carrier in 11, a bomber in United Kingdom, cruiser, season 12, fighter in Canada, a few units too, season 19, two infantry to Kazakh, put the fighter in India, mobilized all out of Washington. Five infantry, one tank, and one artillery. That's a little unorthodox. Not purchasing at least eight units. Seven units, getting the tank in place of a unit. He did the Quang Tung maneuver. Stacked up Ukraine, as we could see. Karelia. And then the non-combats. Two fighters are in Caucasus. But the anti-aircraft gun in Russia. An infantry to West Russia. An infantry to Archangel. Three infantry to Ivenki. And mobilized... Out of Caucasus and out of Russia. Germans are going to get as many land units as possible. No, I lied. We could get 14. I'm just going to get 13 because I'm going to get a tank. Alright, first of all, let's get this cruiser. It should be easy pickings. Send the bomber. The bomber goes one, two, three, and can go one, two, three, three. More options. Let us take Karelia. Let's see if we can get West Russia. We wouldn't have a safe landing point. I'm going to use a tank. I'm going to use one tank. I think it's important for us to get West Russia so that he cannot come back for Karelia. And then I could put all of these units in there. Five on one, that should be fine. Could send the fighter, probably will send the fighter, but we'll see what else we're gonna do. He's got 22 units in here. Let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and six is 20. We could hit with 20 units. Let me calculate a strafe here. Of course, I only have three possible infantry to bring. In. And then we'd have to not get West Russia and not stack Karelia. But let's see, if I send three infantry and ten tanks, that's 33. A bomber would be 37. And six fighters 
would be 55. So I'd be expecting 9 hits. And his 13, 42, 47, 48. He would be expecting uh, 8 hitbacks. And I'd be losing tanks. So that would not be a good strafe. Not a good strafe. So let's just stack up Karelia. That's our best move, I think. Hopefully West Russia turns out. Because they'll have these six tanks that can go up in here. I don't think it'll matter. Let's just blitz. If I move this tank down here, then he's subject to attack from uh, infantry, tank, fighters. And if we try to stack up this, it's just a losing battle. Best we could do is try to hold out as long as we can. I could get this transport, but I would have to land in Morocco with one bomber. And I could put one infantry in Morocco. That's just not going to cut it. The United States could easily assault that. So his transport gets to live, unfortunately. So I think that's the move. Okay. Might as well send these six fighters. It is unfortunate. Uh, no, let's just leave it like that. We'll send the six fighters in here. Way overkill. Let's see it. I don't think we need the dice gods. Well, we do for West Russia. So let's let's say it. May the dice gods be with us. Okay, that worked out. Again, the reason for the tank was so that I could block off West Russia. I'm going to put the fighters all back in Northwest and the bomber right back in Germany. I'm going to move this infantry into Bulgaria. Uh, no. Wrong. I'm going to move him into Germany. Bulgaria is the one territory that these tanks cannot reach now. So instead of Northwest, should we stack up Poland? Thusly. Come in there with 23. No, let's just go this route. Because if he moves this stack into Bulgaria, he's not really going to be able to back it up, is he? Nope, I need one unit. It might have been better if I left the tanks in Bulgaria. Uh, excuse me. In Baltic. That might have been a mistake. To just send everything into Karelia. Because with everything in Karelia, I don't really need to hold West Russia that badly. But he's in the same situation here that I am. He can get this stack next to my capital. I can get this stack next to his capital. And I still outnumber him. So let's see, there'll be one, two, three. Either he's got to take out these two and these two in West Russia. Which means he's got to use some of these infantry. Or he could put everything in here. This is a dead zone. He could put everything in Bulgaria. That's the one thing I'm looking at. Is Bulgaria. That's why I want to make sure there's as many units in Germany as I can get right now. To make sure that Bulgaria is a dead zone. Before I do that, let's just make sure. You're blocked. You are blocked. You're definitely blocked. 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 Okay. Tank in Germany, nine more infantry in Germany, three infantry in Italy, let's see it, the United Kingdom. It's Japan round two, I'm still looking over here, I'm not sure if I am completely happy with my decision to move my air force so that I can move all my units into Germany and to go for a pull, full push towards Moscow because uh, I'm looking at it he has one two three four five he would have had six assuming this seven so probably would have been 
very dicey anyhow, or he could have made it dicey anyhow. So I keep telling myself that. I keep telling myself that, but I wish I had my Air Force in Northwest right now, but I do not. Let's look over UK. Three infantry, aircraft carrier, the two transports, the two destroyers. So he instantly has three transports capable of hitting our west coast. He's going to have a fourth soon, so this is going to be rough. He's going to be forced to have to move this back. He's not going to be able to continue, or at least I hope he's not going to be able to continue towards Germany. If he does, he's going to leave this isolated. I don't think he's going to be able to have enough units to keep this stack from West Russia. I think he's got to take back West Russia. I think he's got to take back Belarus. So I don't think it's as simple as him just stacking up Poland. Poland is a dead zone. Bulgaria is not. So we have to see how this works out. Egypt is only combat. You put two fighters in C zone 7, move the infantry, tank the infantry, the two fighters in India. He has his sub here in the Atlantic. I think that's interesting. Little movement in Australia. Transport. Transport. Just looked at that. And the mobilization, the fleet. And three more infantry in India. So Japan has one, two, three transports. Do we want another transport? Let me see. If I purchase a fighter and a transport, that only leaves me enough for five units, which will be fine. That will give me enough to fill, well, not fill, but use four transports. Let's get an artillery. We'll save one buck. This is interesting. Okay, let's... First, we know we're doing this. We know we're doing this. I'm gonna use one of yous for that. We have two fighters right here. So let's look at this. My purchase might not have been... I might have been able to purchase less, a couple of units less, because I think I could stack up Burma. And I think that would be a good move here. So let's do it. Use the two from... No, you know what? No, 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 no. Don't use those two. Leave those two for now. Because we can come up here. No, we can't. We can't do that. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think that stack is safe against 9 infantry and 2 fighters. I think 5 infantry, 3 artillery, and a tank is safe against 9 infantry and 2 fighters. I just don't think 9 infantry and 2 fighters, though they outnumber slightly, I just don't think those are good good numbers and firepower. I'm going to check on a calculator, just to be sure. So the calculator is giving me strange numbers. It's giving the attacker 57% to win that. It's giving the defender... 39. It's putting attackers' IPC losses at a higher rate. So that is interesting. What I think it means, though, is that I'm going to take this transport. Pick up one infantry. And I'm going to put one infantry in Burma to shore it up. We're going to have to pick up both of these units. It's not going to work otherwise. He just has too many units. Now it is even, and not that you need to calculate this. By the way, with one more unit, with one more infantry, it gives me a 61% chance, which is not bad in defense. Two extra units, and now it gives me a 77% chance of defending that. So two fighters here. Could help with I'm not going to use those bombers. I have a, a plan for them. Lest I forget the battleship. Make sure I'm not missing a juicy target here. Nope. No, sir. All right, let's see it. All right, we'll put this all down in 
36. We have no other transports to defend, do we? Did I purchase a transport? I think I did. Should have purchased a couple of units less. Should have done a better job of checking what I was going to be doing. No benefit to it there. Uh, we'll keep the destroyer with the transport. This bomber. Berietia. This bomber. In Karelia. Let's take one of these fighters. I forgot I had a fighter. Put you up in Berietia as well. We got this fighter over here in Wake Island. we we'll replace that fighter with a double and triple check. It looks good. Fighter. Transport. Artillery. And four infantry. Three of which are not necessary. That's good. Let's send it over to the Allies.